as I bring in an absolute legend champion and Hall of Famer. Last name Jenkins, first name Ferguson. Ferguson Jenkins, welcome to TKN. Hey, Javi. Beautiful. Great entree. I mean, that's an incredible. You did your homework. I don't think you missed uh, a beat <laughs> of all the things that uh, I had an opportunity to achieve. So put your hands together for a man that is truly one of a kind and one of the greats. First name John, last name Lovitz. Welcome, John Lovitz, to TKN, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> it's not that you put glitz and Lovitz. A marvelous <laughs> intro. Thank you very much. Oh, you deserve every bit of it. My Ushering the positivity as we rally. Welcome a one-of-a-kind, beautiful soul. Last name, Raphael. First name, Sally. Sally, welcome to TKN, my friend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my dear, my dear, my dear. What an intro. Wow. No, oh, I, I salute you for, for everything you represent, my friend. Everything. Boy, you do your homework. Whoa. <laughs> Which way to turn? John, can you please share a moment in your life where you were at a crossroads and might have felt stuck? Were there many options, well-intentioned paths on the horizon? The floor is yours, my friend, whenever you are ready, good sir. Uh, from 7 to 15, I wanted to be Willie Mays. <clears throat> and I literally, you know, you're a kid, I wanted to be an African-American baseball player. And then when I was 15, what? I went, oh, crap, I'm not black. When I was 12, my dad said, there's more to life than Willie Mays. And I remember looking at him thinking, uh, no, there isn't. But anyway, it was really hard to give up that passion for baseball. I just, I wasn't nowhere near good enough. I stopped and I got, and then I got into acting and I did plays in high school. Then I was a drama major at UC Irvine for four years. And I was like at college, I did like 21 plays. And anyway, then after college, I was trying to make it. And I give yourself, so anyway, I was 26. I'd been at it for, you know, 11 years. Uh, this was in the radio and the preacher, Southern guy said, well, you know, people say they want to be rich and famous, but uh, ask yourself, are you willing to do what you have to do to get what you want? It, it just seemed impossible. So that night I thought I was, I go, I give up. And then the next morning I woke up in the morning and I just slammed my fist on my pillow. I go, I don't want to quit. I gave up everything. I didn't go to a restaurant. I didn't do anything, but I had a job as a messenger and I would practice that in my cards, doing voices and speeches, rehearsing and writing. And then three years later, things started happening. And that's when I got Saturday Night Live and everything else. I was 46, 20 years later, and I'd been working a lot, but not the last seven years, I hadn't gotten any, hardly any movies. And my agent had just bought a mansion. And I'm like, I go, if I stay with them, I'll be broke. So then I had a, a choice to make, what am I gonna do? Cause they're not getting me any acting work. And that's when I decided, uh, I got to do something different, but I decided to become a stand-up comedian and um, and then fired both of them. And then I worked at that for learning how to do it for a couple of years. I've been a stand-up now for the last 20 years. So it was it was a good thing in a way because it was that fear of like, if I don't, if you don't help yourself out of a situation, no, no one else is going to. So those two things impelled me to do what I had to do to get what I want. So I guess I should thank my agent manager. <laughs> for basically just giving up. And then you just have to rely on yourself. Believe me, if I can do it, you can. I mean, just... uh, Mr. Jenkins, there are many different times in life where we find ourselves at a crossroads. Could you please share a moment in your life when you were at a crossroads and might've felt stuck, my friend? Well, the crossroads probably is, it started when I was 15 years old. As you mentioned earlier, I wanted to be an NHL hockey player. I had the opportunity to meet Willie O'Ree uh, at a young age, so he was playing with the, the Boston uh, Bruins in London, Ontario. My dad took me to the arena and he wanted to basically show me that there's a player of color, Afro-American, playing NHL hockey. And if you think that you're good enough, like this gentleman, that might have an opportunity to, to be an NHL hockey player. But that didn't work. Later on that year, Gene DeJura showed up in my hometown. He was a history teacher, came uh, to, to Collegiate High School and he decided that pitching might be my best uh, uh, avenue and the opportunity to maybe become a professional athlete. And this is something that, uh, as a kid, every kid wants to be a pro professional athlete. I worked with him almost two and a half, three years in the summer, strengthening my arm and understanding that pitching, if I was going to get a chance to sign professionally, I had to show that I had the great ability to do it. I got scouted by several teams as the uh, team I ended up signing with at the age of 18, right out of high school. Went off to class D ball in the Florida State League. 
uh, pitched for like six weeks, did fairly well. The next year they uh, they went to A ball in Miami. Had an opportunity to invite it to major league camp, made the 40 man roster. Things just kind of snowballed for me. Getting uh, the opportunity to talk and understand the, the art of pitching from Jim Bunning, Robin Roberts, Cal McClish, went to winter ball, learned how to throw a slider, which was the pitch that I thought that got me to the big leagues. And I had that opportunity to, to have one of the best managers in baseball, Leo the Lipter Osher, wow. as a manager. I had him for seven years. He gave me that opportunity to be a starting pitcher, to go out there and display my talent, Chicago Cub uniform. I pitched in that organization for 10 years, won uh, 284 ball games in the big leagues, combined National League and American League. So when I look back, the crossroads of understanding that hockey was a great sport, but my best sport was baseball. And uh, I learned uh, the art of pitching, muscle memory, control. I had the opportunity to different gentlemen show me the correct way to learn the game, especially pitching, and to win and to be successful. So that's my crossroads. Wow. I, I, I can't ever imagine what you experienced because, I mean, think about AAA Little Rock. The shocking part is when you went there, you would see parades of kids getting egged in a cafe. I mean, in Little Rock, you get off a plane and there's posters, and they didn't want players of color there. Frank right. Lucchesi, the your manager at the time, told us, hey, just don't let things bother you. And you got along pretty well, but, I mean, you're talking about things that are against the very root cause of what makes us human. Thanks, Avi. You, know, you know, segregation was still real popular in the South, and uh, I was one of four players of color. Dick Allen from Pennsylvania, yeah. Marcelino Lopez from Cuba, Richie Quito from Panama, and Ferguson Jenkins from Canada. And Dick was the only regular player because he played regular. He had to play real. every day, right? He had to play every day because he suffered yes. through some abuse from time to time until he turned it around and people started loving him because of the fact that he was such a good ball player. He was. He was one of the best players in that ball club. He ended up uh, having that honor to go to the big leagues at the end of the season. Oh, did they you. ever, Ferguson, did they ever uh, boo you? or? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I Several, several mm -hmm. different times. Uh, unfortunately, names cannot hurt you. We've all been there, John. We've all needed some someone to lean on in life. If you could call upon a historical figure to help you get some tough situations rectified, which historical figure would you call and why? If either you just broke up with someone or someone broke up with you, you might <laughs> feel awful about it. What if your boss just fired you? You're pretty pissed off. You could call, you could vent to a historical figure about this. Who would it be and why? And then the third one is, you're preparing a speech at a wedding. Maybe you're nervous, maybe you're not. Either way, you want to have someone fine-tune it from history. Who would it be and why? The floor is yours, my friend. Uh, well, well, my if I got, you know, uh, broke up with a girl and I was upset, I would call uh, President John F. Kennedy because, um, first of all, he, he was a ladies' man, so he really knew women. <laughs> Ladies, men don't know women. According to you. And <laughs> wait, that's who I would call. I heard a, a recording when they, of him when they had the Cuban Missile Crisis and he's in the White House and he's talking to the generals and, and, and his cabinet. And, um, you know, it was, they were building, um, you know, the Russians were building launching pads in Cuba. So all the generals saying, we got to declare war. And the cabinet members go, no, we can't do that. And that's all they were saying. And then you hear John Kennedy goes, well, there's several sides to this. He goes, first of all, we can't, if we do, we, we don't want to start World War III. He goes, then, but, but then we can't do nothing. And he goes, then there's a third side. And he goes, then there's a fourth side, a fifth, the sixth. And he looked at the whole picture. And I was so impressed by that. I thought, thank God that guy was president then. You know, Sally, I would, that's who I would call him. But I'm glad you brought that up because we were so cl close to the brink of elimination. So close. So I, I thank you for bringing that yeah. up. Really. First of all, I'm, I really am not a person who's ever been 
indecisive. I'm pretty decisive. But I would、uh, ask Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He he just he knows everything. He knew physics. He knew chemistry. Just he knew、uh, how to do anything. I mean, either him or Moriarty. But、uh, I think <coughs> Sir Arthur. Oh,、uh, your boss fired you. You're pissed off. Who would you call and vent? Well, he's not alive, but I would call my father. You know,、oh. and、uh, he was good at, at、uh, you know, making me understand why it happened and what I should do. And he would probably say, "No, you're upset, but that's life, and and you you got to find another job." And that you know, it happens. You know, and just ask yourself, what did you do, and and learn from it, and keep going. No, well, my dad he built the, the hospital in Tarzana, so I got a job there when I was nineteen. He got me a job there when I was nineteen, but after college I went back. Yeah,、um, <clears throat> there was a woman there with um, I think she had、oh, MS and she, her voice is really shaky and she couldn't move. So I'd say, all right, we're gonna, I'd have to get her out of bed to change her sheets. I go, all right, we're gonna get up on, you know, instead of one, two, three, I'd go eight. So I go one, two, eight, you know, and then the next day I'd get there and they go, John, the woman in four oh. Room four hundred six said to tell you eight.、Uh, Ferguson, we've all been there. If you could call upon a historical figure to help you out, maybe、uh, during a breakup or someone you broke up with, who would you call and why? Second scenario is your boss firing you. You might be pissed off. Who do you call and why? An English individual, probably William Shakespeare.、Uh, that would probably、uh, give you some knowledge on novels that he had a chance to to write. And the biggest thing is there was a lot of deaths situations in. His novels, so very smart individual that wrote、uh, things that people I don't think understood back then, but now they, and now the 20th century they understand. Being fired,、uh, <laughs> I've been traded a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing is that you, you have to consider yourself lucky that you're going to a ball club that wants you. Last year I played with the Cubs. I only won. 14 games, and, and I told Billy, I said, "You give me that ball every fourth day, I'll win some ball games for you." That that season, I started 42 games. Wow! I won 25, <sighs> and I was a Cy Young runner-up、oh, to Kathy、wow. Chunder. Wow! So when I look back at someone understanding, you got fired, and that's what basically when you get traded, you're fired. That I had an opportunity to to basically turn it around, have a pa- a positive thought that. When I took the mound, I was out there to win. The Texas Rangers went from last to second. John, the question I have to ask you is: It's about risk. What's the most significant risk、no. you've taken in your life? Well, tr- trying to be an actor, because there's just the odds of making it are, are pretty much zero. Just the fact that I said I'm going to be a comedian, and nobody was saying, you know, clamoring for my services. You know, it's just, it was just. Personal decision that I made when I was 25. I'm going to focus on comedy, and、um, I had teachers saying I should do that. But you know, and I did some improv, and the Randy Bennett was my teacher from Texas. He goes, "Well, that was good, but you could have been funny this way." You know, I was a class clown, and people said, "Stop goofing off." And then this guy's going, "Well, that's a good way. Here's some other ways you can goof off that are, be, you know, effective and make people laugh." And you're getting older and older. And you know, I was 28 when I got SNL, which is not that old, but you know, in two years I'm going to be 30. I was just going for it, and I just committed to it. But、uh, once I committed to it, it wasn't as scary. I wasn't scared because I, I just was determined. I'll tell you what the scariest thing for、yeah. me was: getting married. Who you marry determines so much about your life. That's so true. Now, do you think that's because of compromise? If you marry the wrong person, that affects everything—the job, the life, the money. The- And you don't have a crystal ball either, so you don't know how it's going to end up. That's true. That's very true. Wow, Ferguson. If you don't mind, my question for you is: What does success look like to you? You know, it, it, it takes a lot of hard work.、Uh, it takes,、uh, I think, uh, stability. Uh, You're popular, but you hope that the popularity part of it transfer into success sometimes. But success comes from hard work. It's it's a consistency that you have to continue to have over a long haul. That there's that one reporter that might say, "Well, you know, Jenkins, you're too old. You got to play the mind game sometimes,、right. because of the fact that you're getting older." 
You don't throw as hard. And the number one thing that you got to tell yourself that you're going to not be defeated. My friend, did you have a nice time? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that was enjoyable. Yes, uh, definitely. Sort of yes, definitely. Really unique. unique. Had a fun time? I did. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah, very different. Yeah, I liked it very much. Well, did, you, uh, did you have a nice time, Sally? I did. It, a, a wonderful time. Thank you. I appreciate it.